Hello and welcome to this Dr. Frost maths video on 3D Pythagoras. Now in the previous video we looked at just Pythagoras theorem. I'm not going to recap in this video, so if you haven't already seen that video and you don't know how Pythagoras works or you need a bit of reminding, then please stop this video and watch that video first. But we're basically going to be applying Pythagoras theorem to 3D problems. And the best way to do so is just to look at a few examples. So let's crack on straight away and work on this example here. So if I copy out this cuboid, and we want to find the length from here to here, the length of AB, so this long line here that's going from one corner of the cuboid to the opposite corner. And these lengths, we've got 3 centimetres, 4 centimetres, and 12 centimetres. Now the key to all these problems we have here is to try and find a sort of 2D right angle triangle floating in 3D space. Now if I want this length, can you see that if I was to add this length here, we've got a right angle here, and if I shade this you might be able to see this triangle more clearly. Can you see that there's a right angle triangle here? So we've effectively tried to turn a 3D problem into a 2D problem, and we're trying to find this hypotenuse here of this 2D triangle. Now, we've only got one side length, the 12 here, of this triangle currently, and we need to work out this side length here. So we would need to know this one first, and we can do that because, can you see that this triangle at the bottom is also a right angle triangle. So if we were to picture the base of the cuboid, can you see that we've got this three here and we've got that four here. So it looks like that. And we're trying to find that length where the A is here and we're trying to find this length here. Yep. So that's here. Now, if we just use Pythagoras theorem in the usual way, we're trying to find this hypotenuse. We just call it X. Well, we can say this side squared, 3 squared, plus the other shorter side squared equals the hypotenuse squared. And remember the hypotenuse, the longest side, it's also opposite the right angle. That makes it easy to spot. So if we do that, that gives us 3 squared is 9 plus 16 is 25. And then that means that x is equal to 5. So we now know that this length here is 5 centimetres. Looking back at this triangle, we've got two of the lengths. We've got the 5 and the 12. So it may help to draw this out separately, this triangle here. So we've got the 5 at the bottom, we've got the 12 going up. And if we apply Pythagoras again, let's call that y, that length we want to find. Um, if we do it the quick way, do you remember if you're trying to find the hypotenuse of right angle triangle, um, then we can do the square root of the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So if we do that, um, and that's the square root of 169, if you were to work out 25 plus 144, and that is 13. And let's put the unit so it's in centimetres, and that is the final answer. So that length there, AB, is 13. Now let's do a second one. This is quite common to try and find the height of a pyramid. So if I just copy that quickly. Now if you want to draw a nice pyramid, I always put like a, a dot in the middle of that parallelogram and then, and then I know the top of the pyramid, the apex has got to be directly above it. So like that, that can be dotted because you can't see it. So we've got eight here and eight here. And all those kind of slanted heights are going to be eight. So again, we can do the same thing. We want to try to find the height, so this length here. Now we can easily form a right angle triangle by just adding a line like this. And you can see that's a right angle. And then again, we've got a 2D triangle floating in 3D space. So that's always the aim with these 3D problems when we're trying to find lengths or angles. So we've got that length, the hypotenuse. We want to find this length, let's call it H, but we don't know that length. So we're going to somehow find this length here. So if we separately draw the base of this pyramid, we've got 8 by 8, I should have put an 8 centimetres here as well, so it indicates a square. We're trying to find this length here that goes from the centre of the base to one corner, so that length, yep. Now what we could do is we could find the length all the way across the base using Pythagoras and then can you see if we've got that length we can just halve it to get that one. So let's find the total length first, so let's call that say x. So x is equal to, well it's the hypotenuse, so remember we can do the square root of the sum of the squares of the other two shorter sides. 
And if you put that into your calculator, I know that's going to give you 8 root 2 when it simplifies it. But we only want half of it, so that means that this length here is going to be 4 root 2. So if I show that working, 8 root 2 divided by 2 is going to be 4 root 2. You could just use your calculator to get that if that's not clear. Now, look, we've got two of the sides of this triangle here. So if we just draw that separately, we've got 4 root 2 here. We've got the height here, and we've got the 8 here. And do you remember the quick way, if you're trying to find one of the shorter sides of the right angle triangle, you do the difference of the squares and then square root it. So h is the square root of the difference of the squares. So we do the longest side squared, the hypotenuse squared, minus, now be very careful here, the 4 root 2, when you square it, you need to put it in brackets. And the reason is, if you didn't have that bracket, only the root 2 would be squared, not all of 4 root 2. So we've got to think about bidness, or order of operations here. So if you do that on a calculator, the square root, and I'm going to write exactly as it appears on the page, with the bracket, and that is 4 root 2 again, remarkably. So it turns out that this is 4 root 2, so in fact, that triangle there was isosceles. If you want it as a decimal, then it's going to be 5.66 uh, centimetres. Let's put the unit to three significant figures. So there we go. We worked out the height. And if you know the height of the pyramid, then you could subsequently work out the volume of the pyramid. Because do you remember that the volume of the pyramid is a third times the area of the base times the height of the pyramid. And the area of the base is going to be just 8 times 8, which is 64. So it's a third times 64 times our height, which is 4 root 2, and that would be the volume of the pyramid. Now, for this last problem, we've got this kind of cheese wedge type shape. And we want to first find the length of AE. So AE is here. So if I draw that line in, it's this length here we want to find. So again, we've got to try and find a 2D triangle floating in 3D space. So if I add this extra line here, we can see, look, we've got that right angle triangle we want, and that is the one we need. So this is actually very similar to this first problem here. So we need to first find, because we've got that height there, that's four, we need to find that length there, let's call that x, um, but we don't know that bottom length, which we need to work out first. But because this is a rectangular base, that there is going to be a sort of right angle triangle, so we could use that triangle in the base there. So if we just draw that separately, we can see that's A here, that's your B, where the right angle is, and that's C. And we want to find, well, that's 10, 5, and we want this length here. Let's call it Y. So we can just do Y is, now, because it's the hypotenuse, it's the square root of the sum of the squares, so 10 squared plus 5 squared. And that's the square root of 125. Now, I'm going to keep it in this square root form because we might need to square it later. So then we kind of concentrate on this triangle now because we want to find out x, that's the length of AE. So if we draw that triangle separately, we've got the y at the bottom, that's the square root of 125. That height there is the 4, and we want to find x. So we again do the same thing. So x is the square root of that side squared, so 16, plus what's the square root of 125 squared? Well, it's just 125. The squared cancels out the square root. So that's just the square root of 141. And if we want that as a decimal, it is 11.923 significant figures. But now we've got a bit of cheeky trigonometry at the end. So we want to find the angle between AE, so that line there, and the base ABCD, so the bottom. So between this line here and the base. Now when you want to find an angle between a line and a plane, because the plane, by the way, is a flat surface, that bottom rectangle is a plane. When you want to find an angle between a line and a plane, I use something called the drop method. So I imagine that AE, imagine that's your pen there, and you were to drop your pen onto this plane here, so ABCD, that rectangle. Well, if you were to drop AE, can you see A would stay where it is, but E would drop onto C because it falls under gravity. So that line AE, if you were to drop it like as if it was a line or a stick or something, that drops onto AC. And 
That means we're trying to find the angle between the original line and the dropped line, so between AE and AC. So can you see it's just that angle there? That's the angle between the line AE and the plane because we use that dropped line to represent the plane. So we just need to find this angle here in this triangle. Can you see it's that angle there? And we can just use Sokotoa. So we could use that length of x there, here, but we've already got two lengths anyway. So we didn't actually need our answer to part A to answer part B. So I'm just gonna use this and this. Now, if you see my trigonometry videos, we wanna try and find this angle. We first label the sides with opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Now, this length here, the four, is opposite to that angle. So we're gonna label it with an O, I'll put it in a circle. And this side here is adjacent to that angle, so I label it with an A. And you remember, Sokatoa, if I just write that out again, it's a bit of a reminder, allows us to work out whether we need to use sine, cos, or tan as our trigonometric function. So we're involving O and A, O and A, that's this one here, the Toa, so that's tan. So you remember the tan of the angle that we're trying to find is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite of four over the adjacent, which is root one, two, five. And then do you remember to get rid of that tan in front of the theta, we do the opposite. So we do inverse tan to both sides and that gets rid of this tan here. And then we do inverse tan to the right hand side as well. So inverse tan of four over root one, two, five. And if we put that in our calculator, that gives us an angle of 19.7 degrees, and that is the final answer.